Peter Haddock and welcome to another site visit and today I'm on my road to zero alternative fuels all the way today because we have not one not two but behind me with my friend Nick Drew the blogger who's testing it out now three electric machines You are the electric man of the moment. You've brought these pieces of equipment into the UK. Tell me all about them. What are they called? Well, first off, Peter, thanks very much for inviting us today. Um, Covaco are the manufacturer of these machines, and at present, we are the first and only manufacturer of a fully electric skid steer loader. And that's why we're here today, folks. Fully electric skid steer loader. This hasn't been an overnight exercise, though, has it, Finlay? Absolutely These not. These machines, folks, have been designed over a number of years. And what I love about this, earlier we are talking, these machines are connected assets. So everybody's been looking about how these machines work because they're GPS enabled, computer enabled, and you even come with a free phone, folks. Everybody gets a free phone with this machine. Why is that? It's because that free phone is a remote control, isn't it, Finlay? Well, it actually acts as the dashboard inside the cab. Yeah. Um, you can download the application onto your mobile phone, onto an iPad, onto any device with a screen, basically. And that will give you the readouts of what the machine is doing. But it will, as you pointed out earlier on, act as a remote control for you. So, the first fully electric built from the battery upwards. Tell me about it. Well, it was designed in 2015 as a prototype. Um, they tested it intensively for four or five years. And we launched it certainly in the UK in 2020, but they launched it on the continent and further afield in 2019, end of. So we've got, as you mentioned, GPS telematic data for five years worth, just to make absolutely sure that the machine does exactly what we've advertised it will do. And the interesting thing about this, folks, is what we're talking about there is the GPS has been used to put data into the hands of the engineers so they can develop and they can optimise this machine. So now this is iteration number 25,000 from the data that these guys have collected. They're optimising it from the use and developing it through real world applications. So every demonstration I do, every farm, every wind turbine site, every building site, anywhere it goes, the factory are amassing data on the battery usage and the usage of the machine. And that means they are forever upgrading, making sure that the machine's doing exactly what it should be doing. And the thing about battery folk, we all have battery anxiety in this, this new world of electric. Eight hours operation on this battery or more. Go back to the Victorian times. The Victorians were terrified of trains because they thought their skin was going to go fall off because they were going so fast. Basically, the only major resistance we've had is the battery, but I am 100% confident that the eight hours plus that we advertise on this machine is achievable, simply because it was designed as a battery powered vehicle. This one will charge in five hours, the yeah. bigger battery. Yeah. The smaller one over there will charge in three and a half. Yeah. That's the standard battery charger. There are lots of different charger options available. The fastest one we have is called the smart charger. And just for argument's sake, it'll charge the machine or the battery from 60% to 100% in an hour. Right, so you've got the ability to use this machine, take a lunch break, charge it up again. Sure. But like you said before, you know, eight hours. Don't off. forget, you're not using it for eight hours solid. It's, it's either on or off. It's, it's not like you've got any idling time. So, and again, from a serviceability point of view, you're only paying for the time that you've used. So that's really important, folks, because we're not taking an existing skid steer model here and trying to squeeze in a battery where the engine used to be. Battery all the way up. It's also designed uh, with flexibility in mind, isn't it? Because we've got not just this unit, and the unit that Nick's driving behind us. We've also got this electric unit as well with its own, and I'm gonna grab it, folks, its own remote control unit. So you can use this remote control unit for this unit here. I can also attach this to here as the super duper one if I don't wanna use my iPhone. The remote control that you mentioned there, that one, the radio control, has a 50 meter operating radius. And we've had inquiries from people wanting to dispose of ordnance. Yeah. 
um, power stations, etc. Not just a construction application. The mobile phone application or the tablet application, let's call it that way, um, has a 15 metre operating radius. So what is the message here then really for people looking at this kind of machine? It's got the lift capacity. Tell me about the, 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 the actual machine itself. This one's got a 400 ampere battery in it, which will allow you to lift 1400 kilos. That machine over there has a 250 ampere battery in it, and that'll allow you to lift 900 kilos. The main thinking behind that really is the ballast weight in order that you can actually offset the weight on the front with the battery. Now, because it's a lead acid battery, we've been able to keep the center of gravity very low in the machine. And also because it was designed as a battery powered unit, not an engine powered unit, we've got rid of the engine, which means that the pivot points on the back of the machine are higher up. So you can actually load at a greater height than you can right. with anything else. And as another plus, because the battery's so low, and there's no engine, it means we've actually managed to lift the height of the machine slightly so that it will work better on undulating ground. You're not catching on anything. And we're testing it here in literally that undulating ground, different applications. Again, well, like a skid steer is a utility type vehicle, sure. isn't it? Yeah. So we've got different buckets. We've got Nick with a, an attachment over there. We've got grab attachments that go with them. The typical ones you'd see. And, and obviously the dealer here, it, it's actually a manufacturer of buckets. Well, Covaco well. started life manufacturing welding tables for the shipping industry. Yep. And as a spin-off from that, they actually started producing buckets, which fits in very well with a skid steer loader. But um, Abiljo, James from Abiljo approached us in September. And the synergy here is it couldn't have worked better, really, in that, as you pointed out, James and his company Abiljo make buckets and all sorts of attachments. What James doesn't make, we can supply. We can supply jackhammers, road sweepers, all sorts of different attachments to go on the front. Absolutely fantastic product, Finlay. It's Thank brilliant you. to see yeah. something new, and it's in kit form, folks, from the factory, so shipped over, put together. So that's it, folks. I'm on another road to zero alternative fuel moment. They're not going to let me switch this on because I'm not a trained operator, folks. But we have one with us today, Nick Drew, the Diggerman blogger. He's testing it out. Uh, behind us at the moment and we'll find out in another video from Nick about what he thinks from the operator's perspective. Thanks very much folks.